If you're looking for ways to bring more joy into your running and you want to be a physically and mentally stronger runner, you're in the right place. This is the Real Life Runners Podcast, and we're your hosts, Kevin and Angie Brown. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now let's get running. All right, so today we're talking about faith in our running. And we are doing this because we wanted to start a new series about how running is connected to our core values. If you've listened to the podcast for a while, you've probably heard us talk about core values and priorities and how it's important for us to get clear on what our priorities are as ways for us to drive decisions in our life, in our running, on what we want to do on any given day or any given week or how to chase goals. There's a lot of connection to goals and priorities and core values. And so we wanted to talk about our core values here as individuals and as a company because there's a lot of things behind the scenes that drive our decisions in our life, in our running, in our business. And we wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of an insight on how we look at these things and and how we take some of these core values and connect them to our running so that hopefully you can start to do the same with the core values that you hold in your life. So today we wanna look at our core value of faith. We wanna talk about how faith can connect us to our running and help us to improve as a runner because some runners see their running as separate from other parts of their life and ultimately separate from who they are, which can lead them to feeling unsatisfied or like running can become a chore from that point of view. So today we want to talk about how faith is one of our cornerstones, both in running and in our life, and how connecting faith to our running journey can bring you more joy, satisfaction, and purpose. Excellent. I think that the whole idea of the the core principles this is a core principle of, of the real life runners company. Like this is who we are. There are also like the individual core values that Angie and I hold that align nicely to the company because, yes. you know, the company is ours. Us. <laughs> um, so, so that helps. But um, we kind of were talking before we hit the record button on this, that these values they're pretty locked in, but sometimes they can they can shift a little bit over time. So checking in with yourself, making sure that you're still doing things that align with your core values, that your core values haven't actually changed over time is also super helpful. Yeah. So today we want to talk about faith and what faith means to us and how we apply faith to our running, specifically in three different ways. And so if you're kind of, if you're starting to listen to this and you're like, oh gosh, they're going to get into religion. That's not what's happening here. Okay. I am going to talk a little bit about my own personal beliefs. Then we're going to do politics. Oh, goodness And gracious. then we're going to do diet culture. No. Um, but it, this is not going to be you listening to me on some sort of religious soapbox. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about how we view faith and specifically how I tie my faith into my running. And Kevin is going to share some, some ways that he does the same. But we can talk about faith in a spiritual sense, but there's also a different ways that we like to look at faith, specifically when we tie this into our health, our fitness, and our running. So, But, but before we get into that yes. one, I think I'm sure you have something that you have to announce, and I believe that it's keyed in on the keyword there of love, because there is something special for all of our listeners, and really, quite frankly, all runners in the entire world that is coming up around Valentine's Day. And that's the five-day running challenge. Yes, it's the five-day running challenge of love. The five-day challenge of love. It's That's not the title. That's not the title at all, but it it is around Valentine's Day. Kevin has dubbed that. It's like an unofficial title of the challenge. It keeps being in my head. (laughs) Like the roller coaster of love? Yes. running challenge of love? Sure. Um, No, it just happens. Valentine's Day happens to fall during the week of our challenge. So... Um, Yes, February 13th through 17th. This is 2023, if you guys are catching this down the road. Um, But yes, we are running our free five-day running challenge. It's a live event. We're going to be releasing content every day for five days to help you figure out how to become a faster and stronger runner. We want to show you our three-step method for you to run faster without having to push harder on every single run. Because a lot of times people get this wrong. We want to show you a better way to train. We want to show you how to train in a way that's right for you, how to personalize a running plan. And so that you can feel confident in that running plan and get the results that you're looking for. Because so many runners feel frustrated when they're not making progress. And we want to help you end that frustration, that cycle, that vicious cycle that so many runners find themselves in and learn how to train in a better way. So head over to five day running challenge.com today to get yourself signed up for that. We're going to be starting 
February 13th. We're going to be going live every day to coach you live. So if you have any questions on whatever we're doing during the challenge or anything about your training, you can come talk to us live every single day. And if you're not able to join us live, there will be replays. I know I've already been getting emails from people asking about that. So everything's going to be recorded. Everything is going to be posted after the fact so that if you can't join us live, you can catch the replay as well. Um, it's our goal to just help as many runners as we can. So if you've already signed up, please think about maybe a friend that you can invite to, to do it with you and tell them to head over to 5dayrunningchallenge.com and sign up for the challenge today. Yeah, have some faith because this 5-day challenge is going to be awesome. It is going to be full awesome. full of love. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's jump into the episode. So there's three ways that we want to look at faith today. And so the first way that we want to look at faith is having faith in the purpose because a lot of runners start running without having a clear or specific reason why they're running in the first place, without having a very clear intention or a clear purpose. A lot of runners have very vague intentions like, oh, I'm, I want to start getting in shape or I want to lose weight. That's vague, right? There's That's not a very specific. So it's hard to know when you kind of say, oh, I want to get in better shape. How do you know you're in better shape, right? Losing weight is a little bit more tangible. Like if you have a number in your head, but it's important to get specific with that and, and have that number actually clear in your mind of sure. like what you're trying to accomplish, right? Because if you start out with out of purpose, without a clear purpose, then it's hard to achieve that goal that's not well defined. So what we want to help you guys understand is that it's important for you to number one, define that purpose. And then number two, have faith in that purpose. So there's a couple of different ways that we want to look at this. Number one is kind of a more superficial level. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper. I love that you opened with the the idea of running just to get in shape. Like to me, it almost always has a just in there. Oh, I just, I'm just trying to get in shape because it's so vague. Mm -hmm. Like when someone is just trying to like dip their toe in the water of yeah. running, maybe this is for me, maybe it's not. I just want to see if I can get in shape. It's so vague that you can't possibly be successful at this because you have no idea what what success would actually look like, mm -hmm. which I think is really what we're aiming here is before we really get into that faith aspect, which is, is coming, is really making sure you have a clear definition of what that goal is. It has to be clear so you know whether you've actually achieved the thing. If you don't have some sort of defining purpose of what you're going out there and doing, why are you actually going to keep on doing it? Yeah. So Number one, you want to just ask yourself that question. It's like, what is the purpose of my running? And that might come out as a, a more superficial answer. Like we, like Kevin just said, to get in shape, to lose weight, to get faster, to challenge myself, something that relates to you as a personal, like your personal life, your personal goals. Mm -hmm. Then I like to look at this as a deeper, on a deeper level. Like what is the bigger purpose of your running? And this is how I like to connect my running to my faith because my belief, and this is not me telling you that you have to b share these same beliefs with me. It's just not, I'm not saying that these are the right beliefs. I'm saying these are my beliefs. Okay. And I hope that some of you can connect to what I'm saying. I think that a lot of you will be able to just based on my conversations with a lot of you inside our training academy, inside our training group, inside the DMs, like in it, people that have done our challenges before. Um, we do tend to have a lot of people that have faith in something, right? So my belief is that we have one life and one body and that this is my body, my health is a gift from God. And running is a way for me to honor that gift. Running is a way for me to live a, like into a deeper purpose that there is for my life. So I believe that we all have a purpose on this earth. And I believe that this is part of my purpose right now is to not only get in shape for myself, but also help lead other people along this path as well. And I think that it's important for us to understand that sometimes our purpose can shift and change. And that's why I said that this is my purpose right now, because I think that it can change with different phases or seasons of your life. I think we can have multiple purposes in our life. We can have multiple passions. We can have a lot of, um, what's, what's like kind of the term that people talk about when they're like looking for like the meaning of their life or like their path in life. Like you want to try to find your, like your direction 
Your is it just your purpose? I think it's purpose. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure the plural of purpose is purpi. Purpi? Uh -huh. Not purposes. I'm pretty sure it's got to be purpose. There's no way. <laughs> it should be. And there's Kevin bringing in the lightness to the deeper conversation. <laughs> but um, so I think that we all want to find our purpose. I think that a lot of us have that need or that longing. And I think that we can have different purposes at different points in our life. And I believe that sharing my journey might help someone else right now so that there is actually a greater purpose to my running. And what is that ripple effect? I'm not sure what that ripple effect is. And I don't think that we will ever fully know what the ripple effect of our lives is can be in this world because you can do something or say something that might affect one person and that person takes it and makes something like maybe that just inspires them to start running and then they use running in a way to inspire others or, or achieve something even greater. There's just such a ripple effect that can happen. And I don't think that we'll ever fully know the ripple effects of our lives, but I do believe that we are all connected. And I believe that there is a, a, greater purpose for all of us being here. I believe in a higher purpose and I believe that I've got to do whatever I can to try to live my best life, to try to serve the greater good. Yeah. I mean, I like that your, your purpose there went so far beyond why you go out and personally go for a run today. Yeah. Your purpose went into more than that. It's part of what created real life runners is it was more than Angie and I going out for a run and yeah. being like, well, I mean, if we create a company, then we definitely are going to be committed to waking up early and going for our run. Like that wasn't, that, that's not the purpose for it. It was to spread and to increase the the joy around running to yeah. help other people do it in a way that wasn't just brutal. That wasn't yeah. just like a daily grind of, well, at least I can check that box off at 530 in the morning. And mm -hmm. now, now I can go about the rest of my day. Mm -hmm. When you do that separation of the run in the morning to the rest of your day, that's mm -hmm. what you were talking about at, at when we opened here is that separation of what you do when you run versus what you do in the rest of your life sometimes leads to a whole lack of satisfaction mm -hmm. with the running. Yeah. Like, I really think that part of my purpose is, is to teach others. And I mean, I do that literally in a classroom teaching high school kids, but I also do that as a, as a coach, coaching cross country kids, mm -hmm. coaching track kids, coaching all the runners on the real life runners team. Like there's so many different ways as a coach that I can share mm -hmm. what I have from literally direct in front of a classroom to like the coaching moves way beyond like the X's and O's of running. Right. It gets deeper than that. And I think that is where the difference between like, well, here, here, read a book and see if you can follow these formulas on how to run versus yeah. actually coaching somebody in how to run mm -hmm. is, is much deeper and much more rewarding. Yeah. And interacting with other humans too. Right. And it's, also understanding that part of our value and our purpose as a company is like Kevin said, is to help make this world a healthier place because there are, there is so much suffering in the world. Like if I look around and see both physical suffering and mental suffering that's happening in the world, it's, there, you can you can find it everywhere. And I want to be a light. I want our company to be a light. I want us to bring more joy. I want us to help people to understand how to be healthier and, and show them an easier pathway to get to those healthy points so that they don't have to live a life of restriction. They don't have to just accept, I'm using air quotes, that accept the inevitable decline of aging. I think that's baloney. And I want to show people that I think that's baloney and that I think that there's a better way. And it's totally okay if you don't agree with me. But for the people that do agree with me and that like that vision, then come on, let's go. Let's do this together, right? Like, let's make this world both a physically and mentally healthier place. What would this world be like if we all took care of our bodies more, if we all figured out how to manage our brains to stop being so mean to ourselves and stop being so hard on ourselves and to really be kind to our, kinder to ourselves, to, to look around us and help us be kinder to other humans on this planet, to improve the mental health and the um, awareness around mental health as well, to help just make this world a more joyful place, to bring more light into the world. Because if I, when I look around, there's a lot of darkness. There's a lot of darkness out there. And I think that people need to be healthy in order to 
live the life that they were meant to live. Because if your physical health is holding you back, that's number one. You have to feel good if you're going to start thinking about questions like this, <laughs> right? Like if you are worried about putting food on the table, or if you're if you have so much back pain that you're just trying to get through the day or trying to get to the next dose of medication that yep. you're that you're taking, that's not going to open up a lot of space for you to think about, oh, what's my higher purpose? How can I use my gifts to help other people on the planet? How can I use my gifts to make this world a better place? So if I can, and if we can here at Real Life Runners, if we can help be people get physically healthier, what's the ripple effect of that? What might people be able to create? How might they be able to go out and make this world a better place just by them feeling better, by them feeling more powerful and in more control of their life and having more freedom in their life and not feeling restricted by their body and by their brain that's just telling them mean thoughts all the time? What would it be like if we knew how to use our brains and our bodies to our advantage to do whatever we wanted to do in this world. Yeah. I mean, just for like some background, if you go back enough years to when we started founding this company, originally we were like two separate things. Angie had a thing, I had a thing, and she was going to do a company that was going to make people be healthier starting at a much younger age because you had mm -hmm. this exposure to all of your, like, your physical therapy patients yep. when they were in much later decades of life. And you're like, man, if I could have seen them 40 years ago, they might not have ever made it to this office. Yeah. Like They might not have needed to be. And I was like, yeah, I want to make a company that I just get people to run really, really really fast and not like make their knees hurt. Like that was my thought is yeah. I can get them to run in a safe way and then to come together and make the company that we've got of like, what if we could get people to run in a safe, healthy and, and happy way so that their life doesn't lead to ultimately showing up at your office just because it, it's exhausting and yeah. painful to get up and out of a chair. Right. Because if we're helping parents and we're helping grandparents, then they're setting a better example for their kids. Maybe they start exercising more. Maybe they start eating healthier and that trickles down to their families. And then their kids grow up seeing their parents or their grandparents even as examples. You know, we've got people in the academy in their 60s, 70s, 50s, 40s, 30s. Like we've got really an age range. Most of our people really have a lot of from 30 into their 70s. And it's a beautiful thing. And even some of our people in there that our grandparents talk about how they are, like their grandchildren will make comments about their running sometimes and how cool they think it is. And that's just so inspiring. Like, dude, my grandma's out running a marathon right now. How yep. cool is that? Right. And so anyway, kind of getting back to a more concrete example of this, I know in my life and so the way, one of the ways that I shouldn't say started my health journey, um, one of the kind of kickstarts for me to get back on track with my consistency happened because of another person who I saw on Facebook. Because if you know my story, essentially I was grew up very athletic, had kids after the second baby. Long story short, I was inconsistent for about three years after that baby. And then I ended up hurting my back and it totally threw me for a loop. And I realized that I wasn't being the mother that I wanted to be because my physical health, my back pain was limiting what I was able to do with my kids. And I did not like that idea at all. And so one day I was on Facebook and there was someone that I had gone to high school with that was posting about her fitness journey. And she was, you know, doing one of these, um, like at home workout programs. And I was like, well, if she's doing it, like that program looks pretty cool. I bet I could, I could get back into that too. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first ways that I started reestablishing that consistency. So I bought that program, that at home workout program, and it gave me that eight week calendar. I'm like, okay, I just have to do this eight week calendar. And then I finished those eight weeks and I'm like, I'm feeling so much better. I'm going to do the another, another eight weeks. And then I got back into running and then I just became consistent again. Right. But I, it was someone else just sharing their journey, sharing their story, inviting other people in that helped me to start my journey back up again, that helped me get off of the inconsistency wagon or get back on the consistency wagon, however you want to say it. Right and get back into it. And that has now led me to creating this company and we've been able to help thousands of people all around the world. Like that's incredible just because that one person was sharing her journey. And would it have happened? 
I hope I, I hope so. Probably. Right. I hope it would have. I believe it would have, but it happened then. And that's what matters. And I still have that person's name in my heart. And I'm thankful for that person, for her sharing her journey as well. Um, and I think another common way that we can think about running with purpose and having faith in a purpose is running for a charity in a race, right? Yeah, we orchards. see this all the time. They're all the time. Like Most of your major marathons, one of the ways that you can get into them, if it's tricky to get through the lottery, is by raising a whole bunch of money. But even if you're not trying to get in through through a lottery and avoid it by raising a bunch of money, there's so much money being raised. This was one of the, the issues that several charities kind of bigger name charities we're having during 2020 yeah. is running races got canceled. So all of their charity runners didn't have all of the money coming in. Yeah. Like there were certain charities that were really just taking a financial hit off yeah. of this because it raises so much money mm -hmm. through, through running a race for a charity, which is fantastic. So that's a great way to, to help kind of like a larger cause on an individual level. We have a, a runner on our team who got into running. She's, she's consistent with it and then got linked up with the Achilles group mm -hmm. in, in New York. Yep. So she has an individual person that she has gone on training runs with yeah. and, and has like, oh, well, I can also pace this person through a race. Mm -hmm. So sure, you can put money into a charity and help a very grand cause, but you can make it very, very specific. Mm -hmm. I mean, Achilles, where you're literally... They, there are Achilles athletes that are essentially blind, that are legally blind, that you are tethered to and you can run a race. Mm -hmm. Does not get much more one-on-one -on -one than tethered to an athlete yeah. and running step-by-step -step with them through a race. Yeah, you are clearly making a difference <laughs> in that person's life. And that is an amazing thing because I believe that even if we can make a difference in one person's life, that is so worthwhile. It drops a rock in the pot. And that's the whole concept of the ripple effect is what about that person who's running? And then the person who watches them cheer and they're like, wow, if that person's running, yeah. I can probably do this. Boom. Now you've, the right. ripple is often, often good. Right. Like how many people have you affected that you have no idea that you've been out on a run and has, have driven by you in a car Maybe you inspired that person to go out, go home and go for a run that night or wake up the next morning and go for a run and they've changed their life. Who knows? That's why I try and have great form when I'm out running. Because <laughs> if I'm running on the side of the road and it looks miserable, yeah. I'm convincing that person that running is miserable. I'm just trying to keep a smile on my face, mm -hmm. wave friendly at the people, even if they cut me off. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to number two. Okay. So the first, that first one was faith in the purpose. Okay. Number two is faith in yourself. There's a lot of people that want to do something or think it'd be cool to do something, but they don't really believe that they can do it. And that leads to a lot of inconsistency and not getting the results that you want because of this funny little thing that we humans like to do called self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe that you are actually capable of doing something, you will create obstacles blocking your own success if you don't believe in yourself. So I really want you to stop and ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, do you have a belief that you can be the person that you want to be? Do you have faith in yourself? Do you believe that you can do the things necessary to achieve your goals? Do you truly believe you can? And I'm going to slow down and allow some time for silence here and not just fill it with banter because I really want you to think about this. Do you believe that you can? Do you have faith in yourself? Because so many people stop before they even start, which is quitting ahead of time. Or they start and then they quit when it gets hard. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, maybe they have enough faith in themselves to start, but not enough faith in themselves to keep going when it gets hard. Yeah. I'm, I'm a runner. I can do hard things, except not this one. This one got a little bit too hard. So I'm, yeah. I'm done with it. Yeah. And look, this is not the same concept of you're out on a run and you know, you're you literally are hurt. So you have to walk it in. That's totally different. This isn't like get up and grind day after day, but this is the faith that you can continue to pursue something bigger than you currently are. This is the faith that if you keep putting in the work, you can become that person that you want to be, which 
is a hundred percent just faith because it's it's saying I I am at at level whatever you are right now. This is me now. This is me now, and I'm going to be a new higher level. Like based on what? Based on what facts? Based on what evidence do you have this? Based on faith. Based on the faith that if I keep putting in the effort, I will continue to improve the person that I am. That I will become the person that I am aiming for. Yeah, exactly. And if you're unsure if you're like, oh, I don't know, that sounds pretty hard. Look at any accomplishment in your life. Anything, right? Did you graduate high school? Did you graduate college? Did you get married? Did you have kids? Did you get a job? Did you get a, a good job? Did you get a better job? Did you achieve some financial milestone that you wanted to achieve? Any thing that you could call an accomplishment in your life you had to have faith in yourself to achieve that thing. Because like Kevin said, there was a point where you were not able to do that thing. And you had to have faith in yourself saying, okay, well, I can't do it now, but I believe that I can. And that's really what faith in yourself is all about, is belief that you can do something that you're not able to do yet. Yeah. I mean, that, that goes to one of my favorite running quotes. It's the Prefontaine quote that to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Pre was super into God. It's illustrated in one of the movies that he's directly not, that his girlfriend, who is highly religious, that was part of their like confrontations. But he, he believes that there was this gift bestowed upon him of running mm -hmm. and that he owes it to where that gift came from. Mm -hmm. I put that 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 where that gift came from as God, but he didn't. He just had it come from above, which is fine. Um, but that's but, just a different word. Sure. Right? Like some people call it God. Some people call it the universe. Some people call it their creator. Mm -hmm. There's so many different words that describe that higher power, but it is a gift. It's still a gift. I be, That's what I believe. I believe that we are all gifted with different things. We have strengths and we have weaknesses. And my strengths are much different than Kevin's. And my weaknesses are also different than Kevin's because we are two different human beings. There's a lot of things that we share. We share some of our strengths. We share some weaknesses, but there's a lot of things that are different as well. And that's because all of us are unique human beings. And we believe in God. We believe in a creator. And we believe that this is a way for us to honor that gift. Yeah. I mean, it, that line has stuck with me since I don't, probably since I was 14, I yeah. think when I first heard it and I can still quote it easily. And and there's a lot of quotes that I, I stumble over when I try and repeat them, but I know that one because to me, running really is a gift. And if I'm like, uh, I don't really feel like, like doing it today or maybe tomorrow or the next day, I think that I'm wasting a gift that I, has, I have been provided. And, and that's just kind of letting me down. And I think that's letting more than just me. Like I have faith that if I keep working at this gift, I can get better and better at it. Yeah. It's, it's one of the, the things that really drives me as a runner is how much can I push this gift? Like how big is that gift? You know, you think back to like Christmas morning, there's the big box <laughs> under the tree. Like, oh, how big is that gift? There might be a brand new bike inside of there. Like there's yeah. something. But you don't know unless you really keep honestly pursuing it and you believe that that gift inside of you is really big that you can try and like test its test its limits a little bit. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the belief in yourself. That's that's part of my foundation of running is to push and to test at the limits. Yeah. And it kind of brings up, I just thought of something um, here too, like the idea of being selfish, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of people that think like, if I take time for my running, it's being selfish and I don't want to take time away from my family or I, I don't want to take time away from this. And this is just for me. And so faith in yourself is not selfish. I would argue like it, when I was listening to you speak there about this has, this is a gift. And if I waste it, mm -hmm. that to me is the selfish thing, yeah. right? Like using the gift and honoring the gift and going out and running and taking care of your health, your body. Like you, you say running is the gift. I say our health is the gift. Yeah, our body 100%. Is also the gift, right? So maybe you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, I'm not as fast as Kevin. Well, join the club, you know, <laughs> like we, running is a gift. Oh, lucky you, Kev. But like running is a gift for all of us, no matter your pace, no matter your distance, the fact that you're even able to go out and run. There are a lot of people in this world that are not able to run. And maybe that's because of a physical limitation. Maybe that's a, a cultural limitation. Maybe that's their environment. They don't live in a safe place where they're able to go out and run. Maybe there's 
there's there's still women in the Middle East that are not able to go out by themselves or have to wear certain things on their heads or and on their body and cover themselves up in certain ways. Otherwise, it's against the law, yep. right? Like, think about that. Like, it is a gift to run. It is a gift to move your body. And if you don't use that gift, like if you're someone that thinks, oh, it's selfish for me to go run, what if you were to just flip that and think to yourself, it's selfish if I don't run. It's selfish if I don't use this gift. If I don't use this to take care of myself and be the best version of myself because I am my best when I take care of myself and that allows me to show up better for everyone else in my life and create that ripple effect that I might not even know about. Yeah. I mean, that, that it's selfish for me to go running reminds me of, you know, early of your running journey, the, yeah. the mom guilt of heading out the door and the kids are crying and clinging to your legs. And I have the same feeling like they were a lot less clingy for me. Like as long as you were holding them, I could slide out the door and go for a run. But like, I still didn't feel great to be like, I'm going to take off for a still chunk of time, and time away. not be with my family. Yeah. But now that they're a little bit older, like I ran with the marathon in December mm -hmm. and our older one, there was an issue and she was not going to be able to be there. She was sick. And she was genuinely upset that she was not going to be able to drive in the car for multiple hours, wake up early and watch me run 26 miles. Right. Like that was bothering her. And so I, I had to give her a big hug and be like, don't worry, I'll run more stupid distances. <laughs> and like, cause, cause you know, I, I make the jokes to try and like lighten the situation, right. but like she genuinely was upset that she was missing out on being able to see that. Yeah. So like, that's, that's the effect that has been built on of years of this happening of you know, it's gotten to a point where she wants to see, not because like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to win a race, but she wants to go see me push hard because I enjoy doing that. And she wants to see me doing what I enjoy doing the same way that I'm going to go to a, you know, her band concert because she enjoys doing that. She works hard to excel at that. So I don't want to miss the performance. Yeah. Yeah. And that just helps you connect to other people in your life as well. Of course. Yeah. So like it, a common way that I often hear this too is like, I will get on calls with people because there will be times where people, you know, wonder about our coaching program, our coaching program, or like on some of our live calls. And one of the things that I have heard multiple times is I just don't know if I will do it. And if you have ever had this thought of like, oh, like I, I want to sign up for that race, but I'm just not sure that I'm going to actually do the training or I would love to sign up for the academy, but I'm just not sure that I have the time to commit to it. This is demonstration of you not having faith in yourself to follow through with a commitment because achieving any goal in your life requires you to do something to actually take action, to follow through. And that starts with having faith in yourself to start having faith to invest your time, invest your energy, invest your money, invest your focus in something with that belief that, yeah, I'm going to invest in this and I'm going to actually do the work that I need to do to get the results. So if you've ever had that thought of like, oh, I'm just not sure if I'm going to do it, ask yourself, why not? Like, is there something about me that I'm, am I not believing in myself or is this really just not important to me, right? Because that could be an answer too. Like it could just not be a priority right now. It could not be a priority ever in your life. And that's totally okay as long as you acknowledge that. But don't beat yourself up thinking, oh, like I just, I don't know if I can do it. Like I don't typically follow through with my commitments. That's a choice, okay? You can choose to have faith in yourself and then do the things that you want to do that you need to do to achieve the goal that you actually want to achieve, Okay. So if you ever start questioning that, start looking inside instead of looking at time or money or all these other external excuses that we like to use of why we're not going after the thing that we actually want to do. Yeah. Excellent. I have, I have one little more kind of uh, personal anecdote on this one of the people who get in their own way. Yeah. Um, so I, I am a sabotage. Yeah. The, the classic self-sabotage. I'm a math teacher. I gave a test today. In order to succeed at the test, you need to bring in a calculator. 
I told them this. I said, I'm not going to give you a calculator. I'm not going to answer questions about how to use your calculator. And some of my kids, not the highest ones, not the lowest ones, but some of the middle ones who were not sure, honestly, they've been for the last probably four or five days talking about, ah, I'm a little nervous about this test. Two of them showed up without a calculator. They, they showed up without a calculator. They walked in. They got a little panicked, like, oh, Mr. Brown, I forgot my calculator. Can I, can I try and find a calculator? And then they're running through the hall trying to find a friend who has a calculator that they right. can borrow. They set themselves up for failure because they told themselves for the last four or five days that they weren't sure how good they were going to be on this test. Yeah. So then they put themselves in a position where they couldn't be successful. They automatically put themselves behind the eight ball. Yeah. Cause that's what we often tend to do to ourselves. And you are not alone. If you've ever done this, you are not alone. And so again, if you find yourself in that position, ask yourself those questions, ask yourselves, do I actually believe that I can do this? Do I have faith in myself that I will follow through? And if not, figure that out. Try to get to the root of that because your life is worth it and your purpose is worth it and your health and your body and all of the things that we've already talked about it's all worth it and you are worth it. So try to get to the bottom of that. And if you want help, we are here. Like this is one of the things about the academy that is different. And this is not, I, I didn't mean for this to be any sort of sales plug, but this is one of the things that is different is we help you get to the bottom of these things. Our podcasts are great. You guys, we thank you for all of you that have left reviews and all of you that reach out telling us what you know, how the podcast affected you every single week, because that's why we do this stuff. But if you want to go even deeper and have a coach help you get to the root of your issues, that's what we do inside of our coaching program. Okay. So be on the lookout. We're opening up enrollment for that in a couple weeks. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, check it out when it, when it opens up. All right, let's move on to step number three, step number three. faith in the process. So one of the things that we see here is that there's a lot of runners out there that want to rush the process and have faster results. We want results and we want them yesterday. Of course we do. And this can lead us to feeling very impatient. Yesterday. And mm -hmm. always feel like we're not doing enough. I so, definitely didn't do enough last week because I yeah, didn't have the results yet. Exactly. <laughs> Something must be wrong here, right? I don't have the result yet. And maybe... You just need to have faith in the process. Maybe you you just haven't given it enough time yet. Maybe you are doing the right things and you just haven't gotten there yet. So what if instead of always feeling impatient, instead of always trying to rush these results, what if you made it about the process instead of the outcome? Instead of the results, instead of just focusing on the results, you chose to focus on the process and have faith in the process and trust the process. So ask yourself, if you trusted the process, do you think you would be more successful or less successful? Yeah. I mean, that's the, the constantly questioning the steps along the way, right. like have, have a goal, have a plan out there and then like have a, have a goal, then have a plan and then stick with the plan. Don't be three weeks into the plan and be like, mm, I'm not sure if this plan is working perfect for me yeah. because I haven't seen the breakthrough results in the first week. Mm -hmm. Like give it some time. The plans, all running plans, like whatever plans you find, like we've got lovely plans. There's all sorts of plans online. Mm -hmm. There's plans probably built into your watch and phone. Yep. And a lot of them are, are well-designed plans if you follow them. Some of them are questionable. Some of the, I said a lot of them are well-designed plans, but none of them are designed to give you the breakthrough result by the end of week one. Right. Like if it's an eight week plan, it's literally designed to give you success by the end of eight weeks. Mm -hmm. It's a 12 week plan to get you to whatever race. It's supposed to get you to the race in week 12, not mm -hmm. in week two. Right. So don't, don't freak out if you're not ready by the end of, uh, you know, if you're 10% through the plan and it's, it hasn't gotten you to the goal yet, it's not supposed to get you to the goal yet. Yeah. Just keep following the process. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people like this idea. They're like, yes, I'm going to follow the process. I'm going to trust the process. But what if I pick the wrong process, <laughs> right? Or what if I'm doing it wrong? What if I'm I'm doing the process wrong? Or if I choose a plan, it's not the right plan. And that goes back to faith in yourself, having faith in yourself to figure it out. You have to do some research. You have to get information. You have to make a decision. You have to commit to it for a reasonable period of time. And then you have to assess whether or not that thing is working for you. And again, go that goes all back to faith in yourself. Do you trust yourself 
to make a decision, experiment with it, assess it, and then decide what you want to do from that point. But again, that goes back also to giving yourself a reasonable amount of time. You can't expect results within a, a week or two. Right. The, the marathon plan is not going to get you to the finish line right. at the end of week one. Yeah. It's not supposed to get you to the finish line at the end of week one. Right. If it does, it's a terrible plan. Please yeah. don't use that. You're not supposed to be running your goal pace in week one and two of the training plan. Also a very good point. Oh, well, I can only, I can only hold my goal pace for two miles. Yeah. That's why the training plan is 16 weeks long, <laughs> right? Trust the plan, trust the process. And then at the end, if you don't get the result that you want, assess, okay, Am I further along than I was when I started? Have I made progress? If so, great. Maybe this is the right plan and maybe it's just taking a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Well, yeah, that's the other thing is at the end of the plan, you can't be so locked into, did I get the absolute A mm -hmm. goal, perfect result right. from it? Because if I didn't, then the plan was worthless. Like if most the, people don't get the result they want on the first time. Exactly. Yeah. Like if the plan got you towards the goal, mm -hmm. closer to the goal than you were at the start of the plan, the plan worked. And I'm not saying that you should just do the plan exactly again. Maybe there's some ways to adjust the plan, yes. optimize the plan towards you. That's fantastic. That's kind of what we do is trying to help people optimize plans towards right. themselves. But just because you didn't hit a goal on your first attempt at it or your second attempt at it doesn't mean that the plan was worthless. If you go through it again, have mm -hmm. faith in that plan. Have yeah. faith that the plan is helping you make some progress and that if you keep pushing forward, you'll get there. If you're so tied into the outcome, to that final result, then you're going to give up on the process because the process can't guarantee the result. The process and following it and doing the steps... It, I can pretty much guarantee that it's going to lead to some solid personal growth, whether it leads to the PR, that's tough to guarantee, but that it's going to lead to some actual good, emotional, physical, mental growth. If you allow it to, mm -hmm. that's, that's built in. Yeah. And it also depends on your familiarity and level of experience with the process as a whole, with running as a whole, yeah. right? How long have you been a runner? How long have you been training for a half marathon or a marathon or a 5k or a 10k or whatever goal it is that you're trying to do? How familiar are you with strength training? Are you expecting that one round of strength training or one cycle of strength training is going to magically take all of your pain away or magically going to give you six pack abs? Like, Probably not, especially if it's the first time you've ever done it, because the more you do the process and the more familiar you are with that process, you can be a little bit more trusting. You can understand that things take time. Then you will start getting better and having more faith in that purpose because the results then start to reinforce the effectiveness of that process as mm -hmm. well, right? So sometimes it takes you a few cycles to start seeing that. And if you give up before... It, you actually see the results and the payoff, that's just so sad, right? And I, I like to think of food always as, you know, a cooking analogy like of having faith in the process. Like when you start cooking a meal, do you have faith that the food or that the recipe will turn out the way that it should if you follow the steps, right? Like, of course you do. Or you probably wouldn't start. You have to have some level of faith, right? There, there might be a little level of doubt there also, and a doubt's totally allowed to come out along for the ride. A brand new recipe, like you yeah. had a cake recipe that we tried years and years ago that was like, this is weird, and it's like the go-to cake recipe now. Mm -hmm. But it was weird the first time you did it, and sure, it th that went into the oven, the oven door closed, and you're not even looking at it anymore. You're like. I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens in 20 minutes, yeah. but had enough faith that it was going to work, had enough faith that it should work. That it might work. That it might work. Yeah. And if it did, that it was supposed to be delicious. Yeah. That gave it a shot, put all the ingredients in, popped it into the oven, closed the door. And we're like, well, let's see how this turns out. Sometimes right. that's, that's what training for a race, especially mm -hmm. training for a race distance that you've never done before. Yep. That's what a lot of it is, is well. Which is kind of fun too. I'm going to put in all this work <laughs> and then I'm going to pin a number on my chest and we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> but there's, there's a 
level of excitement and fun to that also. I mean, that's especially why I like you, running new distances. Yeah, because if you remove the pressure from yourself and just allow yourself to experiment and have fun with it and trust the process, trust that I'm going to gain something from this. Maybe I don't get the exact time on the clock that I want, but I'm probably be going, going to become a stronger person, both physically and mentally, by going through this process. And going back to the cake, now when we make that cake recipe, we don't second guess it because no. we've made it so many times. So the more you run, the more you strength train, the more familiar you become with the process, the greater your faith is going to be in that process. The, the stronger you are going to believe that if I do these things, I'm going to get faster. I'm going to be able to run longer. My coaches, you know, maybe at the very beginning, I know that we have a lot of <laughs> new people when they join the academy, they're like, are you sure this works? And it's like, yes. Well, it works Trust for all the the hundreds of other people that did it. Right. So maybe give it a shot. Right. And then like a month in, they're like, oh my God, my run the other day was amazing. It's like, yes, thank you. And please pat yourself on the back for sticking with it yep. because you just have to stick with it. You have to believe that it's possible. You have to believe that this could work, that this might work, that this is going to work. And the difference in those words that I just use is just your comfort level, right? What do you want to tell yourself? This is going to work. This might work. This could work. Which one do you believe? And you have to check in with yourself on every single thing that you do. Like you might believe, yeah, 5K, totally. This is totally going to work, right? Mm -hmm. If you get to marathon, you're like, oh, that maybe. Like I, I might be able to do that. Probably get pretty close to it. Right. But are you willing to start the process? Are you willing to believe in the millions of runners that have run a marathon in all of history that if you train for a marathon, you will be able to run 26.2 miles? Like it's millions of people have done it. So do you believe that you can? I mean, millions of people have done it, but it still puts you in like the top oh, it, 1% of runners absolutely. in the world, I think, Absol just crossing the finish no, it's line. It's still a ridiculously amazing achievement. And anything is, uh, you know, I think that running your local 5K park run is, an, is a great achievement. When you put yourself out there, like part of the faith in the process is then showing up to a race at the end of it, yeah. being like, well... Let's see if the process worked and then not judging the process being like, well, that, I, that was awful. I just wasted the last eight weeks. I wasted right. the last six months. You didn't, you still had growth. So except that the process is taking you forward, except that the process is leading to, to a betterment of you, even if it's not necessarily leading to the exact PR that you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went through a whole training process and still ended up 40% short of the finish line. It doesn't mean that the process was completely ludicrous. It doesn't mean that my training for an ultra marathon was all wasted. I learned a whole heck of a lot during the training and during the race itself. Yeah. It's it, it wasn't a failure. It wasn't a waste. It was a whole lot about learning about myself and mm -hmm. learning about the process itself. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing I like to think about when learning to trust the process and having faith in the process is parenting. Because <laughs> sometimes it would be a heck of a lot easier to say yes when your child is asking for something or acting in a certain way. But as a parent, I see it as my job to be more focused on their long-term development and their character. And sometimes that means saying no to short-term rewards in order to get those long-term benefits and those long-term payoffs. Yeah. Sometimes that's a little tough. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's very tough. Long-term development is rough. Tough. And it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not batting a thousand with it either. You know, like I, I, I there are times that I've made the wrong parenting decisions or I shouldn't, I shouldn't say wrong not because wrong. it's just the decision there, that was it's made. Just the decision that was made. Right. Yeah. There's no judgment on there, but maybe there's things that I've looked back on. Like, I wish I would have handled that a little differently. Right. Um, or, you know, having faith in the process could be learning any new skill. I decided two years ago that I wanted to learn how to play the guitar. And it's important for me to trust the process that I have to learn some basics like how to hold the guitar, like mm -hmm. how, what the heck a chord is, how to position my fingers for some of the easier chords before I could even attempt to do some of the more complicated chords. Like I remember the first time that I held a guitar and tried to put my fingers in a chord position, my fingers literally wouldn't do it. They would not hold the strings down in the right way to strum. And it sounded terrible, but I have to trust the process and have faith that 
if I learn the basics and if I practice, if I put effort forth learning these basics, that I will be able to play more easily and play more complicated songs after that. Yeah. I mean, that's part of this whole faith in the process is the early part of the process doesn't look like you're making much yeah. well progress. Yeah. It looks like you're, you're kind of stagnant because the growth is so small at that point. Sometimes like from a different perspective, it's, it's rapid. If you're first getting into running almost every race you run, you have a good opportunity of hitting a PR. Yeah. If you've been running for years and years, it's, it's a lot trickier to find the PRs, but at the same time, those very, very early weeks and months of trying like a new aspect of running or just getting into running, the growth is so slow that it's not giving you such amazing rewards. The same way that when you were playing the guitar, you have to start with such basics. Mm -hmm. As I'm upping my strength, I have to start with such low weights. And I'm like, man, it'd be really cool if I could lift this. No, no, it would not be cool if I had a hernia. Yeah. Like that's not going to be a cool thing to do. Like start with the basic movements, start yeah. with the, the intro to running. Yes, I'm sure that you can go online and find all sorts of like super cool looking workouts and then you could post it up to your Strava and everybody would send you all of the, the cheers. But is that going to be the best for you? Or do you have faith in the process of doing the basics and then building yourself up to that? Absolutely. So we hope that this was an episode that you could see how faith connected to your running because it's not just faith in God. It's not just faith in that higher power. Yes, that is part of it for us, but there's a lot more to faith as well. There's faith in a purpose. There's faith in the process. There's faith in yourself. And we all need to have faith in ourselves if we are going to achieve anything in our life, both in our running and in all the other areas of our lives. So we hope that you can start to look at it that way and start to see it as an extension of your faith, whatever that might be. And also sign up for the five-day running challenge, okay? We would love to work with you guys more. We'd love to coach you over there, meet you live, um, and help you with your running over at fivedayrunningchallenge.com. And if you felt, thought that this episode was helpful, also please share it with a friend. Leave us a review on iTunes. There's a great way to say thank you. My birthday was yesterday, so if you would like to leave me a birthday gift, you can leave me a review over on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. I think it's, it's Apple Podcasts now. Um, very simple. Just find our show, scroll all the way down where it says, write a review, just tap on that. You can type in your review. You can hit the five star button and call it a day. It'll take you about a minute or two. Um, and we will be very, very appreciative because it allows other listeners to find our show as well. So if you ever went to your podcast app and searched for running or runners and you found us through that way, you understand what we're talking about. Like this is a way that people can find us, which Try is great. Us. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's what we want to, to let you guys know about today is 5dayrunningchallenge.com. Leave us a rating and review, share with a friend, invite your friends over to the 5-Day Challenge. And as always, we appreciate you guys being here. This has been the Real Life Runners Podcast, episode number 294. Now get out there and run your life.